Aloha and welcome to A Word with Ward. I'm Representative Gene Ward and today I have two erudite gentlemen who are going to talk about something that some of you may have heard of but don't understand. It's the shield law. I have Professor Gerald Cato and Attorney Jeffrey Portnoy. Is it Cato or Cato? Cato. Cato. <laughs> My apologies. Gentlemen, generally before we get into a topic, we kind of get a bit of the background of who's who or what some of the things that people should know about you who are going to be hearing about the uh, shield law. Professor Kato, what are some of the things you want people as an identity marker to know about you before you talk about all these uh, things on the shield law? Oh, well, uh, some background facts. Some background. I uh, was a newspaper reporter in California and at the Honolulu Advertiser uh, before I went into uh, television. Um, worked at KITV and KGMB as a, a political reporter. Uh, and um, after uh, about 18 years as a, as a journalist, I went and uh, joined the University of Hawaii faculty teaching journalism, where I uh, am currently uh, an associate professor of journalism School of Communications. So you've been a practitioner as well as a academic in terms of teaching. Been are you graduate or undergraduate uh, professor? I mean your students, are you doing graduate? Um, uh, primarily undergraduate. Primarily undergraduate. Taught many uh, working journalists in town. Do you ever have to bring in a uh, journalist lawyer or someone like uh, Mr. Portnoy? Uh, Mr. Portnoy and I have been... Not a guest uh, speaker either? <laughs> Mr. Portnoy and I have uh, worked together for a long time when even when I was a, a lowly uh, newspaper reporter, he's represented the, the Honolulu Advertiser, represented me uh, while I was reporting. So Jeff, you've been in the fight. What are some of your uh, credentials? Well, I'm presently a partner at the law firm of Kate Chetty. I've been there for 43 years. I've been fortunate for almost all that time to have a specialty in media law. I've uh, represented just about every media outlet in Hawaii over the years, <laughs> newspaper, mm -hmm. magazines, radio, television, uh, along with many of the nonprofit groups like the Honolulu Media Council and others, and was one of the people along with Jerry and a few other people who were uh, involved in getting our shield law passed the first mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. And so it's something that I've had both a professional and a personal interest in for some time. Uh, I was going to dive in right into the shield law, but I was thinking of you've been in the in the defense of the First Amendment for so long. Were you here when Frank Fossey, were you doing part of the Frank Fossey when he tried to... Uh, yes, the answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was a, was a characteristic, uh, well, I was... Frank, Frank had a, uh, what should we say, I, I'd love to say a love-hate relationship with the media, <laughs> but uh, yes, uh, many years ago when I represented the newspaper several times when the mayor in one way or another did something that the media was not happy about. I remember one time he uh, he locked out certain locked media out. people from his press conferences because he felt they weren't being uh, sympathetic to his interests and we had to go to court and get that reversed. We actually made some very good law nationally as a result of <laughs> Mayor Frank. So <laughs> he was a very good friend in that way of the media and myself. <laughs> uh, so we have uh, those who are in the, uh, the media teaching it as well as uh, solving some of the problems. But what, the shield law, when, we talked, when I said we were gonna talk about the shield law, uh, let's define for the viewing public what we are really talking about. They know about the First Amendment, but the shield law... They well, it's actually about. very simple. The shield law is a statute that would permit uh, people who work for the media, and that's a whole long discussion mm -hmm. we can have, uh, the ability to claim that they are not required to reveal either sources of information or unpublished information in any type of litigation, whether it be civil or criminal or administrative matter. So it gives them a privilege similar, but not exactly to that, for example, that priests have or doctors have and lawyers have, but the rest of us don't have. If you're subpoena gene to give testimony, almost always you'll be required to provide that information to the best of your knowledge. 
but society has decided that there are certain types of information and certain types of professions in which in order to achieve information that those individuals need and for the public good, mm -hmm. you should not be required to provide certain information in a balancing situation. So basically, it says to people who work in the media, if there's a shield law, you don't have to provide information that you otherwise might have to provide without a shield law. That's the basic definition. So if we had a case study that the professor taught, what would be a good example to put that into? He can tell context? you about his own case. He can tell you about my case. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to talk <laughs> hypothetical. Okay, let, let, let's hear the real one. <laughs> well, uh, let's take a real case and why, why yeah. I'm so uh, uh, concerned about the shield law. Uh, back, I think it was in 84. Um, in a long time, but in 1984, uh, I was subpoenaed to testify in a case involving uh, someone you know, Andy Anderson. Oh my goodness. Um, uh, Andy Anderson had uh, built a um, restaurant at uh, on Kuhio Avenue. Oh, the Waikiki, the seafood. Yeah, the okay. seafood restaurant yeah, I in Waikiki, that. I think was Seaside and Kuhio, if I mm -hmm. recall. Mm -hmm. He was uh, uh, renovating a building, a rundown building that was there at the corner, going to uh, uh, create a new restaurant. Uh, a as it turns out, uh, you know, I had heard through sources that uh, uh, he was proceeding without, uh, without the proper permits and the city was issuing uh, cease and desist orders, and um, uh, in any case, wrote a story about that. Uh, because it was, the building was too high or something. I think it was well, a high uh, he, he had proceeded to do all kinds of work without a permit, mm. uh, which, uh, uh, and when I interviewed him, um, uh, he, he, as many other people have complained, complained about the Byzantine building permit system mm -hmm. and uh, uh, you, you know time was money and so on and so forth. In any case, he, he was very forthcoming in the interview. Uh, did a story about this uh, and uh, uh, in one of the more unusual moves, the city prosecutor's office, uh, Chuck Marsland was then the um, city uh -huh. prosecutor, uh, moved to uh, uh, bring the case to trial. Uh, it's a petty misdemeanor, by the way. But uh, the deputy prosecutor immediately subpoenaed me, the reporter who first uh, reported the story, uh, on the basis that my story constituted evidence mm. that mm. it was a confession on the part of uh, Andy Anderson. Now, did we have a shield law then? No, no, no we didn't we have did a shield not. law. We did so not have a shield law. So you got subpoenaed. You said, "Come in and give us your yes." And as, as I explained okay. to the prosecutor, city prosecutor, the deputy at that time, I, <laughs> I don't believe that uh, I don't believe that a reporter should be testifying in court about stories that they've written. The, the story, uh, the story stands on its own. Mm. That uh, you know, it's. Uh, it's 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 if they want if it's hearsay, so be it. You know I'm not there to uh, 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 be a agent for the prosecutor in terms of gathering evidence for the prosecutor's office. So you refused then. So I refused, hmm. and there was uh, a threat, clearly communicated to uh, my attorney. That, uh, you use the attorney at the time? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys go back to the other law. If I ref <laughs> decide I refuse to testify, <laughs> that uh, I would be in contempt of court and that would, would be, uh, the sanction would be going to jail. Uh, I was willing to do that because I do not believe that the reporter should be, uh, become an arm of the Office of Prosecutor or Law Enforcement. Uh, the press is independent of the prosecutor mm. and law enforcement. It's an independent agency. Um, uh, the upshot of all of this was that uh, uh, Andy Anderson, just before I was scheduled to testify, Andy Anderson 
pleaded no contest uh, to the case and negated the necessity of testifying. The, the, the difference between what happened with Jerry and, and what a shield law would do is that without a shield law, then it is up to an individual judge to decide whether a reporter should or should not provide information or whether they have mm -hmm. a legitimate basis in not mm -hmm. providing that information. And so it becomes very uncertain, Gene. There are some standards that have been set out by various courts around the country, but it's still up to an individual judge. The argument in the last decade has been as more and more courts are moving away or have moved away from finding a reporter's privilege, that the best way to ensure that the reporters know if they have a privilege or not is to go to the legislature and ask the legislature mm -hmm. to find that mm -hmm. they have this privilege so that there'd be some certainty uh, as to whether a reporter does or does not have the right to withhold certain information. Now the bigger philosophical issue, which is a legitimate issue, is whether it is more important that a media person, and not just someone who works for the newspaper, even a potential blogger, and that's a big argument that mm -hmm. led yeah, to the uh, mm -hmm. demise of our shield law, mm -hmm. um, you know, should be able to have that privilege in order to be able to obtain information that otherwise they might not be able to get because the people giving that information for legitimate reasons, for example, maybe their employment or other things, would not otherwise provide that unless they knew that the reporter would not be obligated to provide it. Versus the argument that a reporter should have no greater right not to testify than you. Mm. That's the philosophical argument. If there are circumstances where it's not just a building permit, but it's where you witness somebody shooting somebody, are there... That doesn't apply. That doesn't that, apply. Oh, so those sort of things are... No, out, anything out of a boundary. reporter actually witnesses was not even within our shield law, which at the time it was passed mm, several years ago, was one of the more... Um, one of the stronger shield laws in the United States as far as the extent of the privilege and who it covered. And everyone here was happy with it. It passed, I think unanimously, unanimously, both houses, signed by the governor, and for five years did not create a single negative problem for law enforcement. In fact, there were only two cases that came out. One dealt with a independent movie uh, no, a filmmaker. producer, filmmaker, Quiet. and the other one I can't recall. But so they invoked it twice in the five well, years? Well, it, it became an issue twice oh, okay. in five years, and it didn't lead to any problems. In fact, both cases found the privilege applied. Mm -hmm. But at the last minute when the bill was enacted or passed, for reasons I've never learned, a five-year sunset provision was put in. So when it came time for the sunset provision to be invoked or for it to be removed, we got into a big problem here at the legislature a few years ago. People started tinkering with the bill. They said, okay, we'll, re we'll revoke the sunset provision, but we also want to take away this privilege and this provision. And frankly, the journalists told the House at the last minute, we don't want this bill. We'd rather have no yeah. bill. We'd rather go back to the judges deciding it than have a bill that is not worth having. And that's where we are today. So the question is, can we get the bill and the law that we already had, and for some reason sunsetted without people fooling around with it. Jeff and Joe, give me an example of a strong shield built and a weak one. I'm trying to get street language to where sure. people can see, hey, here this is protective, and this one is, is too weak, it's, it's useless. What's in a good example? Of a shield language that has substance and one that's just- The one we had one we is had. really good, and it the up. one that's pending <laughs> in the Senate is really, is really bad. bad. <laughs> hey, that's, a, that's, that, that's what it amounts to. Hey, give me the street language of that. <laughs> well, a, 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 a good shield law would provide broad protection for the uh, collection and dissemination of news in the public interest news that would uh, uh, enhance democratic values, if you will. Mm. Uh, uh, so you, you, you want to give as much flexibility to, a, from my perspective, to a broad range of, uh, of, of news gatherers uh, to gather the news 
unhindered uh, or uh, without fear that uh, they may be subject to uh, uh, subpoenas, that they, they may indeed become an arm of the police or the prosecutor. Mm -hmm. And it's always about subpoenas. No, so I know there. No, Generally, it's about no, no. subpoenas. Yeah. Okay. You know, okay. uh, well, one of the things I should add is that uh, a good reporter, a good reporter, and, and we've had some good reporters around here, that good reporter uh, uh, goes about his job gathering news and information. That's what you're trained to do. You gather information, and you can gather a lot of information uh, and in that way save uh, save prosecutors and, and police a lot of time. Yeah, and I might point out, Gene, uh, this is important for people to realize, it doesn't give reporters, and I'm using it in the broadest sense, immunity from being sued if their yeah, information yeah. is false. A shield law uh, doesn't say to a reporter, you don't have to worry, you can say anything you want about anybody yeah. and nobody can do anything to you. If the information that they put out proves to be false or an invasion of someone's privacy, they can be sued just like anybody else. What it means is when they're not a party, they can't be drawn mm. into a dispute mm -hmm. and become an advocate mm -hmm. for one side or the other. Mm -hmm. that, that's critical for people to understand. It doesn't protect them from facing a, a, a civil action or even a criminal action, like you pointed out, if you see something happen. Uh, but it, it eliminates you from having to become an advocate for the prosecutor yeah. or for a civil mm. lawyer. That was the goal of it, and you know, frankly, we're not without one now. Well, I mean, I can Amendment, argue right? well, I mean, and I can argue a qualified privilege yeah. and have, and frankly, most of the time, many times, we've been very successful in Hawaii. But it's just uncertain, and it's evolving. And what we wanted and what we got was certainty. Now we don't have it, but we're in the hands of judges. How did we get along without it? prior to the one that we did pass, even though it expired well, in five we, years? we did because we had prosecutors many times after Marsland, uh, Peter Carlisle, for example, who understood the value of the privilege. Uh, we had lawyers in private practice who didn't want to get involved in a constitutional issue, and so they, they backed off from forcing the issue. We had judges, and without getting technical, there's a so-called three-part test as to whether mm -hmm. there is a privilege or not without a statute. Mm. Uh, can the information be gotten some, some other way? Uh, how critical is it to the dispute? So we can live without it. It's just frankly in the last 10 years, virtually every state in the United States, except maybe for one, and now two, has a shield law. So we're not asking so for Hawaii something that's... So Hawaii is an outlier again. Yeah, well, you know what? We weren't. Early on, we were a pioneer. <laughs> we pioneer. became an outlier. It's, it's such an ironic situation. No, you know, you know Gene, <laughs> the, the, uh, the first shield law ever enacted, this is not an unusual kind of law. People, it's not, it's not something exotic. The first shield law ever enacted was in 1896 in Baltimore. Mm. Mm. Uh, and... and uh, uh, other states ha enacted shield laws, and the shield laws uh, uh, variously reflect the time that they were enacted. Uh, you know, 1896, it involved newspapers. Newspapers were the media. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in the, the 60s, television, newspapers, magazines. We're in the 21st century now. You know, media has uh, become a lot broader. Uh, I mean, candidly, you know, mm. what happened a few years ago is that there were a small number of legislators and a governor, bless his heart, who just don't have a good relationship or didn't have a good relationship mm. with the media. And in the case of at least one legislator, completely misunderstood the whole purpose of the shield law had some personal interactions, negative interactions, and he was powerful enough at the time, and he was able to uh, literally kill the shield law by putting in changes along with the governor uh, that were just not acceptable to the mm. media. And so we lost something that was really a treasure. But other than these personal grudges, what would people have to fear if there is a shield law? I mean, given those personal political interactions. Well, that, what, that's came something, out, what came out, uh, you know, was that, oh, if we give reporters this 
free pass. They'll say and do everything. And look how horrible they are now. They'll be even worse. They'll, they'll write things that they really don't have a source. <laughs> they'll say, a source told me that Joe yeah. Blow took $10,000 under the table. And then when I try to find out who the source is, they'll have a law that says I don't have to tell you who the source is. So you know what? They didn't have a source. There's a lot of bugaboos. Uh, now, are there, are there occasionally bad journalists? Absolutely. And we heard about it at the mm -hmm. time. But we've had a pretty good group of journalists. And really, they are, they are semantical, personal arguments that really don't hold water. Mm -hmm. but, but Jeff, let me know? pick up on the notion of the independence of the media, particularly when you mention now there's some bad apples out there. We've got media who've almost taken sides now. If you do a CNN versus a Fox News, yeah. Yeah. Uh, those guys will say stuff almost soliloquy editorialized, and they're not held accountable. They're almost carrying the water for sometimes candidates, sometimes for ideologies. Shield laws don't fit into that area, does it? Or is that just in well, it could. Media? No, no. Oh. I mean, I mean, it could, depending upon the information that is being provided and where the information comes from. We're talking generally about two categories, very briefly. One, sources. Confidential okay, so sources. Okay. Who told you that kind of right. stuff? Right. Okay. That's the one that most people focus on. And that survived, by the way, in one form or another, even in the bill that got killed. What didn't survive is whether a reporter or a news outlet or a blogger has to reveal information which is never published. Unpublished, unpublished. photographs, unpublished sources, notes. Sources, unpublished And notes. that's what, frankly, the Senate mm -hmm. try to put back in, that you would not have a privilege in not revealing unpublished mm. information. And that's critical. That's really, frankly, maybe more important than a source. That mm. means I have to hand over to the prosecutor all of my notes, even notes. if none of it makes yeah. its way into print. So that became a very important negative to the media. And, and, and that, that, that language involving unpublished information uh, is what's in the current draft of the uh, the shield law bill that's that's in the, the Senate Judiciary Committee now. And the other issue was who would be covered. And this is a much more mm -hmm. difficult one, and there's a lot of disagreement, mm. even among the media. <laughs> Jerry's a big advocate for saying there's no longer one set of media and then another. No, there's not the traditional journalists, the ones who went to journalism school and worked for a newspaper, versus how most of us get our news these days over the internet. And so we had a huge discussion for weeks with the Attorney General at the time when the bill was passed as to how do you define who's mm -hmm. a journalist. And our mm -hmm. bill was the far, most far-reaching in including people who blog, for example. Okay, bloggers not, were in it. Not just, okay. not just a blogger who once a month writes about their neighbor, but an Ian Lind or a mm -hmm. Civil Beat. They mm -hmm. were included because they are as legitimate a journalist, quote unquote, as Jerry was, when he worked for the radio. But you know what? The uh, legislators, some of them said, no, we're not going to protect those people. We'll be happy to protect somebody who works for the Star Advertiser, but we're not going to protect Civil Beat. That, that's mm. in the bill now, a yeah. limitation on who's a covered. A limitation who's covered. And, and, and I, I think the problem right now that we face is the, uh, the, problem, of the problem involving the press at any point coming to the legislature to ask for any kind of legislation. It, 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 provi it presents to lawmakers a temptation they cannot resist. For whatever reasons, uh, their f misguided fear about the media, uh, prejudices, biases, past run-ins with the media, mm. now is the opportunity to get back at the, the media. And, uh, and we kept hearing, sorry to interrupt yeah. you, but when we came up here for hearings on the bill, mm -hmm. we were trying to keep it alive. The chair of one Senate committee held up the old <laughs> newspaper of Dewey <laughs> defeats Truman, and he said, this is what you guys are trying to protect. How do you, how do you respond to that, that kind of demag demagoguery? <laughs> I mean, it's impossible. What does that have to do with the shield law? That has to do with a mistake that was made mm. 70 years it's ago a, <laughs> or whatever. That has nothing to do with whether in a society, and it's a legitimate argument, Gene, it is better for the public to have journalists in the broadest sense 
who can be, feel free in getting information that they think the community needs, or it's not that we should not give them any greater privilege than most of the rest of us, even though we've given it to lawyers and doctors and priests. And that's the philosophical argument. I'm good with mm. that. I can't respond to do we beat Struman? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, look, the, you know, the, 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 the news media, journalists are not perfect people. They make mistakes sometimes. Uh, uh, is it deliberate? Uh, you know, there are processes, uh, 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 libel uh, lawsuits, civil lawsuits, by which you can pursue uh, questions of uh, defamation. But, uh, but I think at the same time, journalists, journalists provide an important societal function. They provide uh, uh, people with information. Of a society where uh, there, 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 there's absolutely no information uh, available about uh, uh, about what's going on at the legislature, or God help us, uh, a shooting in San Bernardino. You know, mm -hmm. the media doesn't care. We're going to ignore it. Uh, 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 you know, the media, the news media, provides an important function and. I think it's incumbent on the legislature uh, to try to advance uh, advance that function, to try to help assist in uh, the free flow of information, the public's right to know. I, I, I think uh, I think we've had some good journalism in this town, and here I'll, I'll, I'll put in a plug for Jim, do Jim, Jim Dooley's <laughs> Jim Dooley's do uh, uh, Sunny uh, uh, book uh, on investigative right. reporting. Sunny so, Day's a shady character. And I just want to finish with this: we had a really good bill. It got every single vote in the state house and the state senate, signed by the governor. We need to have it again. It created no mm -hmm. problems. It was working. It was viewed as a model, not only across the United States, but in Congress, which is looking at a shell law. Gene, do what you can. As Dewey <laughs> beats Truman or didn't beat Truman, the clock always beats us out. Gentlemen, we're out of time. All Thank right. you so Thank much you. for sharing what otherwise is a topic we're going to revisit. And hopefully, as you're saying, we're going to be more transparent and open in the legislature and get this uh, shield law back into Thank uh, you, sir. Thank you. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you for watching A Word with Ward. Aloha.